last time I had this, I had short hair. Um, okay. Perfect. So good morning. Um, I'm Elio. And we're going to talk today is about SVGs. Um, chances are that you heard about it at one moment or the other. Doesn't matter if you if you are a developer or a designer or whatever else. Uh, you can find it any, anywhere on the web nowadays. Um, so a few things about me. I'm a Mozilla tech speaker. So we travel quite a bit around, um, especially in Europe, and give talks about open web technologies and uh, Mozilla technologies. Um, because like there are so many open source technologies, it doesn't matter only to Mozilla, but also to a lot of people. So SVG is one of them. And actually, I'm also a, the designer at Uni, a part of the Tor project. We measure internet censorship. So if you are not from a first world country, uh, like um, Czech, Germany, or Switzerland, you might want to try to use it, because like you might uh, find out some quite interesting um, censorship happening also. I'm also a member of Open Labs Hackerspace in Tirana, Albania, uh, for the past five years. And yeah, um, it's, it's one of the first open source communities there as well. And the thing I'm going to talk a bit, bit more today is um, URA and Identity Hub, which are open source design projects. Basically, um, design communities, but with open source values, helping open source um, software. Um, so we founded that in 2016 with just the perm, um, with just the idea that we got a lot of projects saying, "Hey man, can you help me with that? I need a logo. I need a website for that." And it was been mostly open source projects, and I must say that their design really lagged really badly. And in, in the first, I started helping, but then I thought, "Okay, all these people are coming to me. That doesn't make much sense." if it's only me. So I started growing um, a bit of a, a group around me and found open source design, which was another group. And we c kind of like created a thing where people um, would request design and even like actually Doug from uh, OpenSUSE requested some designs at open source design as well. And we actually try to help those people. And yeah, I talked a bit about Mozilla Tech Speakers. Um, so if you are interested in public speaking, it's a volunteer program. So I don't work for Mozilla. I'm just a volunteer, just. And you get a little bit of training to, to speak at public conferences and talk about um, technically um, related projects. So it, is quite, it has been quite nice because you get to know quite a lot of people. And I've been a tech speaker for three years now. But not so important to that. It's mostly about the question I wanted to ask today um, about the importance of software. If you write good software, actually, which is like the case for a lot of open source projects and open source software, and there is no one else to use it because it doesn't have any outreach, does it really exist in some kind of sense? as with a forest um, parallelism. So if you have good software but no one knows about it, is it worth it? And I think that's quite related as well to, to the reputation about marketing and design. Be, because in open source um, projects, marketing is seen as a bad thing about people doing decisions developers don't like, people don't like, and it's quite often seen as the opposite of the spectrum where we push marketing all uh, out of the project and like all the people are doing things from the grassroots with probably knowledge they lack so many well-written software in open source actually don't get so much exposure because of that reason so having said that we were thinking about um, how you can solve one of the problems um, related to that is that developers and designers have a hard time working together, um, mostly because of um, how their brains are wired quite differently. And 
so designers think visually and uh, programmers, of course, uh, in a different way. I'm not a programmer, so I cannot talk for, for, for developers. Um, but, but I actually thought that SVG as a format is quite interesting because um, from, um, from the code side, it's actually XML based. So any web developer comes across it at some point. But also from the design side, it's vector based. So if you are a designer, you can actually, even in Adobe Illustrator or Inkscape, you can export to SVG. So it's this common ground which uh, works, works well for both, both sides. And this is actually the main idea we had about our open source, open source project, Identity Hub. So a lot of projects ask me, uh, ask people, hey, can you send me that logo? In, I need it in that resolution. I need that asset in that resolution, SVG, whatever, CMYK, RGB. And it got really tiresome at some point, especially when you're working with journalists who want to use uh, talk about your project. And you got to send all the zips around to satisfy everyone. And we thought, why not create a platform which can do this for you, basically? So that was the idea about Identity Up, where you can have all your assets, colors, fonts, photos, images in one place. And you basically upload one SVG for one asset. And it gets converted automatically to um, other formats. And people can actually choose themselves what they need. Um, this makes it quite easier for non-designers to, to get involved and get everything they need. So actually, I don't want to talk too much about that. Um, I just wanted to show you um, how it works in real time. Show you a quick live demo. And this is now weird because this is four to three. Okay. So you can go to identityapp.co and we currently have a live demo, which um, is quite alpha, but works. So once you have a, uh, an account created, you can easily create projects. Come on, internet, don't let me down. Hmm. Okay, the internet is letting me down. It worked a bit before. Yeah, they always say like you should try live demos often before and it never works. Okay, uh, this is the bad news. It's not, the internet is not working. The good news is that we're gonna have a workshop uh, today, later, around four, I think, and it's gonna be a quite um, longer workshop. So we can go through all, that, all those things later on. And um, you basically can create your, if you have, for example, the OpenSUSE project, you can create, uh, you can put all the logos, all files, all visuals, illustrations in one place, and people can grab whatever they need in whatever format they need. This also works pretty well for a style guide. So when you actually work with developers who have not a great idea how to use um, the visuals of your project, you can just link them to the page and they can see, oh, okay, this is how you're gonna use that. On the technical side, um, Identity Hub is free software. It's uh, AGPL licensed. So um, some people might not like that, but it's written in Laravel, PHP in the back, back end and uh, React in the front end. We are hoping uh, very soon to to do the um, front end, um, uh, displaying the front end in the, on the server, so you can use it also uh, without JavaScript enabled in Tor browser or sim similar as well. So if you want to contribute, um, it's on GitHub. Many issues are open. We currently have also a bit of. Um, <laughs> this is funny. We currently also have a bit of. Um, more developers being involved, so we can mentor and even have some budget for some stuff. So if you're interested to help, uh, feel free to let us know. It's also self-hostable. So the thing we want to do is 
that you can actually mi migrate from our platform to your own platform. So you can just install Identity Hub on your own server, and when you are not happy with your uh, system administrator or whatever, you can just get all your data and move somewhere else. And related to this is also the main aspect we are working on right now, which is not currently available, but it's going to be um, the main feature of developers and designers working together is to have a Git integration of Identity Hub. So basically, designers can use Identity Hub as a front end. And in the back end, it gets all the assets get synced to a Git repo. So whenever you do a change, it translates into a Git command, uh, which gets pushed to a Git repo. So developers who actually prefer to use Git can get all the assets in a Git repo. So basically, the visuals will be SVGs. The colors will be Inkscape um, color swatches or just text files. And the photos will be just the biggest resolution of photos available. So this creates a, a nice balance between working on the same project, developers using one tool, designers using the other tool, but it's ultimately the same master tool, let's say. And this is one feature currently right now in the works. And yeah, if people are interested to, to help on that, just let us know. And we'll be in the workshop later on to talk about this in a more slow paced manner as well. So yeah, I hope um, SVG can bring designers and developers a bit closer together and make it a bit easier to push for better design in open source as well. Um, if you have any questions, just let me know. Also in the hallway, I'll be all around all the day. Thank you. Yeah. That's a good question. So. Once, once the stable is released, uh, there will be a free plans for basic, basic um, number of assets. So for example, for 20 assets. And well, it's self-hostable software, so you can host it on your own server always uh, for free. Uh, but in, it's in the same manner as this course. So our software, we don't want our software to be open core. We want it to be the same software you would install. Um, so no code difference on that side. We might do special um, offers, let's say, for open source projects to to sponsor them. But yeah, cool. We are two minutes early. Um, yeah, um, I think my workshop is around at four. You can check out the schedule uh, today. So if you want to learn more or ask more questions or get your hands dirty and create, create a page with actual internet connection, we can do that as well later on. Thank you.